Look, we've kind of had a theme running through the program uh, today. We've talked to uh, people in, in Napier. There's an emergency legislation to let farmers in particular basically clean up their properties and try and get back to productive business as quickly as possible. And a whole lot of red tape has been causing problems with that. But underlying all of this, I don't think that any New Zealander could say that things are right or normal yet. There's the egg crisis. I've had the sesame oil wheat crisis. And I do get a feeling there are some underlying problems and also, as we've seen, cost of living crisis, food prices up 17% over the past 12 months and uh, fruit and veg just going through the roof. So what is happening? And the government, well, can wrap up and tell you it's giving you more money, which has taken off you in the first place. Is there, if you like, an end in sight or any light at the end of this tunnel when you go to the supermarket every week? Joining us now is Raymond Blakely, uh, Chief Executive of the Food and Grocery Council. And in case you don't know, they're the people who lobby for and represent the people who make all the stuff that gets on your your supermarket uh, shelf. Raymond, lovely to have you with us again. Good morning to you. Morena, Sean, how are you? Good, thank you. Now, look, last time we talked, you said, yep, um, Hawke's Bay is going to cause problems, it hits a few thing, t- things, but do we have a, a bigger underlying program uh, problem right now in terms of supply chains and in terms of having not enough to eat but traditional chains of supply for what we used to like eating or buying or seeing on our supermarket shelves? Have we still got an issue? Right. Well, there's a couple of questions in there, Sean. So the first one is, do we still have an underlying issue? And I think everyone can see that it's still very early days in understanding the full impact of particularly Cyclone Gabrielle, which hit about a month ago. But we've also had that, as you know, hard on the heels of Cyclone Hail in early January and then the anniversary weekend floods, which were uh, impactful in Auckland and some other places up north uh, in late January. So we've definitely had a trifecta of weather events that have had a massive impact. And while they have had an impact on fresh produce and some of our other sectors, we know that dairy couldn't uh, collect milk for a while. We know that there's been livestock impacts. But fresh produce is the the big area that will see the ongoing impact. We also are experiencing really interesting and challenging challenges to the supply chain, which was already under pressure. Yeah, now I I want to ask why is that and what is that challenge? So the supply chain was under pressure for a number of reasons, internationally and domestically, and we've traversed those uh, probably Mm. quite a few times in the last few months. But we've got fuel prices going up, we've got labour shortages, and we've had driver shortages in New Zealand, which you've seen play out in the heavy vehicle area. Truck and bus are both challenged, and this time of year is particularly difficult. We've then had the massive impact to the transport network in terms of roading. We've got many state highways that are out and will be out for months and maybe won't be back to state highway standard for years. We've got arterial routes that are challenged and we've also had the inter-islander go down. Yeah, that, <laughs> see, this is all like infrastructure and resilience, isn't it? Yes, it is. And I guess it's important to keep in mind that while we have expectations of our transport network being resilient, which is an interesting word, it's really a trade-off between how resilient a country like ours can afford to make it and how we prioritise that over other expenditure and climate change and the massive impacts that are coming. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. I can't let you get away with that. The weather events had nothing to do with climate change and uh, an analysis of statistical data says they're normal weather events for New Zealand. I'm not going to get into an argument with you about that. It's not an argument, it's just a fact. (laughs) Let's agree to say that there's different views on that. Yeah. well, there are facts and then there are other views. Yeah. <laughs> we, need to, we need to work on minimising the impact and mm. whether you agree or not about um, that climate change is making our transport network more challenged. Yeah. As a country, we've got some difficult decisions about how much do you spend to increase the resilience and how do we manage in these circumstances going forward where there are likely to be more severe weather events 
that could uh, wreak havoc again. And even in the short term, that is a significant factor to your second question, which mm-hmm. was what do we know about what's happening now? And what we know is that we have got areas that are hard hit, but that data that's coming in, and there's a lot of great work going on with the Ministry of Primary Industries and other industry associations, Food and Grocery Council is involved as well, to keep a watching brief on what, what's happening, yeah. get good data in, understand what that means for fresh produce, and then for manufacturing, which is where, as you say, the Food and Grocery Council has its membership base. Yeah. And it's interesting to think about the fact that a lot of people may not know that what you grow to buy at the supermarket as fresh produce to use yourself is different to what is grown to be made into other products. Right. With different characteristics. Yeah. yeah. And so we are getting a picture of which areas have been hit and when those supply challenges will come down the track and in what product lines. Yeah. And as we get that, it's, inf- it's information that's valuable to share. I think you also hinted at a question about will there be enough food for New Zealanders? Yeah. How serious And, and I know I know that sounds a wacky thing to ask in New Zealand, but I was thinking about this the other day. I, I think we've lost a lot of faith in things that we took for granted in New Zealand in the last four or five years, and I wondered, will we run out of food? We, we won't run out of food. That's Yay. the collective view, is that we won't run out of food. And we, we import a lot of food. We produce a lot of food for New Zealand, and we produce a lot of food for the world. So we won't run out of food as a sort of net position, but we will have gaps and we will experience difference between what we want and what we need. And so, you know, from a nutritional background, uh, you can satisfy what you need in your diet a variety of different ways. What you want in your diet might be quite different, and that's where your sesame or wheat crackers come in, Sean, that yeah. you may not be able to get those. But look, but I, I we'll find, I'll give you another example. Stuff. I hate to do this. It's not all about me. Um, finding pears, canned pears, has been difficult in the last couple of weeks. Yep. And Canned apricots, no be, problem. Pears, yep. no. Yeah. So we'll start to see that impact of what you were used to seeing on the shelves won't be there. And I think that's on the back of COVID where we did get used to seeing gaps. And so we are we don't get as alarmed as we used to when we see gaps on supermarkets. But we do ultimately want to get those supermarket shelves back up to a much higher level of um, occupancy, if you like, on the shelves so that yeah. there aren't those gaps, but that is going to take a while. And as we've talked about before, the best thing that people can do is be prepared to be flexible. Don't get your heart set on, I have to have my pears or I have to have my sesame or wheat crackers because you're setting yourself up for disappointment. Try and look at it as an opportunity to be flexible and try new mm. things, try new products. We have amazing uh, entrepreneurial companies that will find ways of doing things differently and it's a great opportunity to experiment and think about how you can do things. Is there anything the government can do big picture? And you know, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Is there anything they can do big picture long term to, uh, and I know this sounds a bit crazy, to get us back to the level of comfort and confidence that we used to have? Well, um, you might be better asking the government that question of yeah. what they think they can do, but I guess certainly what business wants from government is confidence that they are making the best decisions about the infrastructure rebuild. And we've heard our Prime Minister talk about building back better, safer and smarter. That sounds wonderful and we want to see how that's going to be fleshed out by great policy. And we know that we've got underinvestment in, in, in a range of different areas yeah. in New Zealand. So it's yeah. going to you be almost get the feeling, yeah, Raywin, that you know we've had an infrastructure that worked. You know, when I was a kid, our population was three million. It's now five million plus, and we didn't spend a whole lot of money building infrastructure for you know nearly twice the, the number of people in thirty or forty years that we've got, and we've kind of hit pay dirt. Yep, you reap what you sow, and I think the other thing that we need to keep in mind is that we are a long, skinny country with a reasonably well spread out population and that makes it hard to compare ourselves to European countries where they've got a concentrated population and a, and a bigger yes, ability and it's easier. to gather money and invest yeah. and, they don't ha- and they're not at the bottom of the world. So we have to be realistic about that and we have to make the best decisions we can for the future with limited uh, 
money that is available to invest. All right, and I won't bitch about my peers anymore. <laughs> Try something new, Sean. That's All my right, guy. I just don't like apricots. Hey, thank you very much indeed, Raymond. Good to check in with you again. Right, that Peter. is that is Raymond Blakely from the Food and Grocery Council of New Zealand. Yep, I just think there's an underlying feeling from amongst a lot of us that something the country feels a bit broke. And I don't mean broke as in financially, but we're broken. The way it used to be isn't the way it is uh, anymore. Um, Sean, I'm immediately forced to question your guest's ability to send good data from Bab when she seems happy to dismiss it out of hand. Build good roads so we can move goods around economically and effectively linchpin of the economy. Well, isn't it interesting? It was all about climate change, but it's not. The data says it's not about climate change. It's about years of underinvestment in our infrastructure. And the country not thinking hard enough and basically believing in rubbish like climate change being the problem. That's when things break down, when you don't make good decisions based on the facts, for goodness sake. So, morning, Sean. Why is it when you hear Morena, you know climate change is the next thing coming out of your guest's mouth? That's Paul from Central. Thank you, Paul, from Central Otago. He's got the idea, got a lot of pools too. It's nice to know where you're from. Um, Sean, one lettuce, $9 at Fruit World yesterday. Virginia, don't go to Fruit World anymore. Oh, lettuce, it's just rabbit food, honestly. It's just rabbit food, lettuce. I wouldn't bother. Um, Sean, nicknames. Lux can be described as the amount of light reaching the eye. The leader of the opposition seems to not have his Lux on. He is not shedding any light on his opposition to the Labour Party. He is currently Lux off. I wish he would be Lux on, says Warwick. Oh, I don't know that that works for me, any of that text in any way. Sean, I have two cans of pears. What are they worth to you? A platform mug? Ah, oh, don't come the raw. I'm not going to barter pears, canned pears for you. I'll try apricots. Don't worry, worry about your bloody pears, FFS, says you. Well, why not? I'd love a canned pear. Um, oh, my God, says this text. The hardship of wants and needs. Great New Zealand needs a wake-up call. A couple of generations have no idea of that concept. Good lesson for them. And now we're into this intergenerational war. Oh, we had it tough. Young people, these at days. They've got no idea. This battle of the generations has gone on, you know, since the time of Socrates. I don't think I had it particularly tougher than young people these days. I don't people think young people have it particularly tougher than I did in their day. It's different, but it's the same. Sean, in my opinion, they are trying to get rid of the small farmers so everyone will only buy from the big organisations. That's why the price of fresh fruit and veg are getting more and more expensive, says G. G, do you also doubt the man landed on the moon and the 9-11 was a conspiracy? Uh, Sean, the partly empty shelves of eggs in supermarkets are nothing but supermarkets markets getting political. Good point, good point. Rather than just doing what they should, feed your customers what they need. More wokeness BS, says Kaz. Yeah, I'm with you on that, Kaz. Sean, nobody controls where the, when they are born, where they are born or who their parents are. Even today in New Zealand, anyone can Im improve themselves with the right attitude. When I was younger, when I was younger, I interviewed and employed quite a few people. Sorry, Ian, I'm taking the mickey now. The first attribute I looked for was attitude. Actually, that's true, Ian, I agree with you on that because it flows through everything we do. So it's no good blaming others for your situation. It solves nothing. No, it doesn't solve anything. You're right, Ian. I thank you for your text.